We'll get you set up over here after I clean up my mess and uh, drain these things, and then we'll um, turn them upside down. We'll take a look in the insides, and I'll show you my theory as to what's going on. Okay, folks, we're over here in the bench, D-O-B, Dad's old bench. We're going to start looking at the insides of the carbs. Any other carb, I'd be saying make sure that you use your JIS tools on because usually they're stuck, but... You know, I've gotten into mine before, so I don't expect them to be stuck. Although I am going to replace these. As I said before, I didn't have the stuff I have now. These screws look like shit. I'm pretty sure I have enough of those. I need 16 of them. Pretty sure I have enough of those carb screws. Alright. Now we have new O-rings, so we're going to set these aside. There's your carb O-ring float bowl. Looks pretty good. I didn't expect it to be really dirty. There might be a little bit in there. The thing I'm more concerned about is these floats. Now, <clears throat> just like on other carburetors, you check these float levels and when the float is just touching the uh, float pin. So on these, you got to kind of lean this in a certain way to get that done. And I'll show you what I mean here. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell sometimes, but if you can just bounce it off like that, see how it just bounces? That does not feel right. I think these float needles are shot. I think my suspicion is right. They don't have a whole lot of springage left in the tips. Just the tip, just for a second. So I think that's what the problem is. I think the springs are weak. They're not closing off either soon enough or enough altogether. And that's what we got. Well, let's go ahead and just check that float level on number, I don't know, whatever it is. <clears throat> the float level is 7.2 millimeters on the Magna, and uh, on the Sabre it's 8.3, so keep that in mind. It's listed in the service manual that way. And that calculates over to 280 in Imperial, 280 thou, so a little over a quarter inch. So with this thing just touching, yeah, the float level is pretty good. But I don't like this. This definitely does not feel right. That should not do that. They should bounce off of that a hell of a lot better. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the, um, uh, the all the float bowl, uh, all the float bowls off, and then we'll kind of start taking them apart one at a time and take a look at those float needles. Because, like I said, the way this is feeling, that is not. I, I don't think that's the way I normally feel them at all. I know it's not the way I normally feel. When I put these things in, there's very little bounce there. I'm not going to take the fuel line off either because I um, just put that on when I did the throttle cable. I did the conversion on these carbs to the metal fuel tees when I first did them. So um, I don't have to really worry about the fuel tees and the integrity of that part of the fuel system. And uh, new O-rings and stuff then. But I noticed right off the bat that when I took off, um, which one was it? Number two here definitely feels better than number four, or number, which one was it? Yeah, number two is definitely better, so I, I think the float valves are, are are not good. I think they're just wore out. They need to be replaced. I think that's where a lot of this problem was coming. So, since I'm going to be doing the um, float valves anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling them apart. And the floats are interchangeable. You don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to clean them. We'll blow the jets out. Uh, off camera. Yeah, there's a pretty good line on these as I suspected. Yeah, you can see the line on there. Yeah, definitely a line on there, but they're not terrible. I've seen worse. But um, like I said, I think that we got problems in this in these uh, floats. I think I think a couple of these carbs are overfueling because of it. And that's what I'm going with. And I am changing the filter out. I have one coming. So I'll do that off camera. I'm not going to do any of that on camera. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the rest of these out and uh, 
I'll come back and we'll summarize some stuff before I put it back together. And then um, we'll do a test on it, make sure we have a good fuel patency, you know, do my normal pressure test, which I don't expect to be any problems on this. And then um, we'll uh, put them back on the bike. Now I'm not going to show you the reinstallation because you already saw the disassembly. Actually, there's one thing I will cover in that. I'm sorry. I will cover when I, um, I will film when I put the carburetors back in. I want to show you how I jam those in and get uh, them into the carb holders. I mentioned that earlier. Um, it has to, these are not terrible because you're taking two of the uh, carb holders out, or we did rather, for one and three here. Uh, so when we put those in, we'll just kind of angle and we'll split the difference on the error because these things don't exactly line up. So we're essentially going to cock them on, on both sides of both the carb side and the head side with a little silicone grease. These will seat in or get mostly in on two and four. And then when we bring one and three down, they'll kind of self-align themselves and then pop in on both the carb side and the head side. I'll show you when we do that. But as far as the rest of the installation goes, I'm not going to show you all that. And then we'll fire it up and show you how it runs. Number two here gives you a little trickiness going on because when you go to pull the... Um, uh, the pin out you can't get it past the lever but if you look right here there is a cutaway in that lever the connector that linkage rather so what you do is you just bring it to that cutaway and then that's what it's there for to um, get past that all right so don't freak out if you're taking a set of these apart and you can't get one of the pins out take a look at the item that is blocking you and a lot of times they accommodate that which is what they did with that little uh, radius right there and for number three you have the same problem but it's off center of that where that radius is so what they did was they provided you a hole in the uh, linkage where you can um, get the pin out so again there is some uh, accommodation for that on um, on the linkage a couple other points of interest on these carbs um, here's your adjusters two this would be for number four there isn't one on number three because it's your base carb and then one for number one these are impossible, and I mean impossible to get at while the engine's running at an idle. I don't know any way you can do it. What you end up having to do is, I don't think you, have, you can have the fuel tank in when you do this. So that's one thing nice about having a sub tank, because there's fuel in the sub tank, or you can just easily put some in with a funnel. And you start to bike up, uh, do your reading, and then you shut it down. And what I do is I, I open the throttle wide open and uh, clamp it open. And then you can reach up, uh, or reach down rather, something like that. You can reach in with a really long Phillips screwdriver. And you got to know which, obviously you've already read it on your gauge, but you got to know which way this goes. Again, when you, um, when you back it off, you're closing the throttle a little bit more. Therefore, you're raising the, um, uh, the vacuum on the gauge. So if it was already too high, you'd have to screw it in to open it up. So the more that the uh, butterfly is open, the lower the vacuum impulse on intake stroke. So again, when you turn these in, it opens it up. When you turn it out, it closes it. So you just got to remember that. And you do a trial by error. You go in there, uh, you know, with the engine off again, wide open throttle. You open it up, you stick in, you turn it a little bit, you take that clamp off, restart it, check it again. And it takes a little while to do, but it's the only way I know of to get this um, synchronization done, which I'm going to have to do again because I'm going to do a valve clearance check. If there's any of the valves that are significantly off, that's going to change that. Uh, vacuum dynamic a little bit even and I, want, I don't like even a little bit off so we're going to go ahead and do that um, I'm not going to do that on camera it's impossible to show it but uh, just bringing it up to you that those are the adjuster screws the three of them and three being your base carb another thing I wanted to show you was uh, I'm probably going to do this off camera but I'm, I'm going to take off the um, vacuum diaphragms uh, and take a look at them because I replaced all the diaphragms with aftermarket um, back in the day because the diaphragms are no good I just want to inspect those because they are aftermarket. Now the place I got them from provides a really good product, but um, I just want to double check them. So I'll do that off camera. I, I painted these chrome pieces up because the chrome was all crappy. I'm going to wire wheel all that off and just let it ride because that really looks like shit. And I may even have enough screws to do all these. Otherwise I'll go online and order um, 32 of them and uh, or a bag of 50 or whatever it is and then and get uh, these new screws in because like I said these look like crap did not have the hardware or the stock as I said that I have now so I'll replace all this stuff make it look a lot better more functional but that's what I'm going to do uh, later if I find anything I'll show you but otherwise I'm not going to cover that because you know it's it is what it is all right folks I found the problem it I am I was right and I'm not right 
but I was on the right track. This is something you always got to do when you check your um, carburetors out. I'm going to see if I can pick this up on my mic here. So I'm going to bring you a little closer here and listen. Can you hear that? There's gas inside this float. The floats are no good. We got to replace all the floats. In fact, uh, I don't even know where it is inside of it, but you can definitely hear it and feel it. If I put it on a scale, you could see the difference in weight. This one's empty. That one's empty. That one's empty. And I don't remember which one this came out of. Doesn't matter. It's been a long time since I ran into one of these like that, but you know, I knew something was wrong, and I needed to get in here and check it. So. Uh, what we're going to do to, to obviously, oh, wait a minute, is that a crack there? Might be. Doesn't matter. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm going to replace all four floats. I'm pretty sure I can find them aftermarket. I hope the hell I can because the OEMs are going to be absolutely ginormously expensive. But if i got to do it, i got to do it. I'll get on Randax uh, Cycle Shack and see if I can order four of these for a VF750. Probably use other models too. I have four other floats from some other carbs. That were, I believe, from a Sabre, but I don't think they're the same floats. But anyway, let's take a quick look at those and see. I have four of these carbs. This body just happens to be uh, removed from the rack. The rack's really only hanging together by the linkages. Uh, that I, I bought in a lot of carbs from Sarasota, a guy in Sarasota a couple of years ago. This is the only one that's been opened up. So you can see the float looks in pretty good shape, and I think it's exactly the same. I'm going to try to verify that using the part numbers. I think it's the exact same damn thing. All right. Now, if that's the case, then we're just going to use these used ones because, like I said, it looks exactly right. But, yep, that, that's, the, that's your problem, lady, is you got uh, water in your, in your gullet there. You got uh, fuel inside one of the floats, so it's clearly overfueling on that cylinder, which is why I was running like crap, and I smelled, so I smelled fuel. What am I doing? Smelled fuel, running rich, heat soaking like I'm MFR. And so there, there's, there's your problem. Uh, it's already high on one cylinder, maybe more because of the float valves. But uh, we'll address this, I think, by just putting these in. Once I verify 100% that they're the right ones, I'll have to crack the other three carbs and make sure they're okay. But these, these look really good. Um, and uh, they've just been sitting around here. I almost threw these carbs away, but I was going to strip them uh, before I did that. I was just looking at these the other day going, I think I'll just uh, toss them. I've never used any parts off them except the linkage here and there. But uh, now that we got these, I think we're going to be set. That way I don't have to buy anything. Because these, these can get pricey if you got to go OEM. Yeah, these are excellent. One was a little cruddy. I cleaned it up already. But these these look a hell of a lot better than these do. I mean, come on. Look at that. These things are just toast. Yeah, so we'll just use these four after a little bit more cleaning. Uh, and get the uh, new float valves in, set the uh, float needles in, set the uh, float levels, and do the other stuff I said I was going to do. Uh, I'm not going to film all that unless um, something pops up, but uh, the rest of it um, you'll see in a little bit through the magic of editing. Another thing we can do here is we can measure the weight of each of the floats, and what I mean by that is we're going to take one that's not full of fluid that came out of the Magna. This is one from another car, but it doesn't have anything in it like gas or anything. Measure that, and then we'll measure the one that does, 0.25 ounces. This is the one, I don't know if you can hear that or not, that does, 0.35 ounces, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's definitely a lot. And this probably explains that one float that I was touching, and it didn't want to bounce back off of the float needle spring like the other ones did, and I assumed that the float needle spring was bad. This has got to be the reason why, because the float's heavy. All right, so let's try one from the replacement carb, see what it is, 0.25. So these are definitely the right um, floats for this carb, even though they came out of, uh, you know, I think a Sabre or something, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not even going to bother to do a parts cross-reference, because they, they size up correctly, and they're obviously the same weight. Where did you go? I guess we got a low battery. But you saw the difference? 0.25 for an empty, 0.35 ounces for the one with fluid, and 0.25 again uh, for one of the ones we're going to replace it with. So that's something else you can do uh, to verify that you do have a problem with, uh, with a float. Just weigh it against a known good one. Okay, folks, it's the next day, and I'm putting these cards back together. 
Um, I got the floats in. Uh, word on that in a minute. Actually, I want to cover three things in this little clip. Um, I'm doing a pressure test right now. That's not one of the things, and it's passing just fine. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, got the new float needles in with the floats that I discussed uh, in the last clip from yesterday that I was going to replace it with. And unfortunately, one of the floats is cracked. I'll show you that. See how it's cracked right there? Yeah, so that one's no good. So I just used what I felt was the best of the other four that came out of it and then three of the replacement ones and put these uh, new needles in. So that's that was one of the things I wanted to show you. That was the float cracked. Second is, uh, this is something you got to look at, especially with aftermarket parts. These are This is the number uh, for the proper um, uh, float needles for this particular set of carbs, 18-8953. K, they're uh, KN types made by K&L, which is generally really good stuff. But I went to put one of them in, and I had what you would call a dead, uh, you know, it was kind of a dead drop or a dead bump. In other words, there was no springage. And, you know, I've covered this many times before in other videos that this springage is very important, all right? And, why, and I immediately recognized it as there's a problem with the um, needle, a brand new needle I put in. So if you take a look at it, you can see that, let me see if I can zoom you up a little bit better. You can see that the, the little tit in it is compressed in. In other words, it's not out anymore or even, I don't know if it was originally, probably went in when I compressed it the first time, would not come back out. You can see it trying to move a little bit, but it doesn't want to come back out, and that is not right. Now luckily these come in sets of six, and I was wondering actually as I was open the package, opening the package up why they would do that. Maybe because um, some of the flat sixes like the Valkyries or the Gold Wings use the same ones, but even the Makini ones that I buy are in sets of six so I'm glad they do that because I had a spare to put in a brand new one but that's something you gotta look at so let's see it was the float um, the float needle and the third thing was these pilot jets are completely seized I cannot get these out no matter what I do if I apply any more torque to these with a screwdriver or anything I'll snap them off they are completely stuck, and I've never run into that before. I've always been able to get them out. I was actually trying this one back here, all right? And um, I, I even heated it. You know, there was no floats in or anything. I heated it with a pencil torch, and I cannot break these loose whatsoever. They are so stuck. Now, I'm not completely sure why, because I'm pretty diligent, as you probably know, about when these are installed. But they were installed about six years ago when I originally did these carbs. And they're just seized in. They're corroded in. So, uh, I, you know, I was only pulling them out for a matter of good practice. So I'm leaving it alone. There's no reason to take them out. I, I put a very small jet reamer down through here just as a pin to make sure that they were clear. They're all clear. I blew them out. I blew out the, you know, everything's fine. So I'm not going to worry about it because there wasn't any indications of any low circuit issues anyway the way it was running it was definitely an overfueling issue and we already covered the reasons why um, so yeah um, that's not good question you might ask is well what if I ever did have to get in here and, and take them out well here's what would happen I would have to plan for a complete disassembly essentially an unracking of all the carbs take them off the box the air box get all the parts I need for that because all those o-rings and everything else and the o-rings between the fuel joints and everything are gonna have to be replaced again if I do that most likely and then um, I would take each individual carb body and essentially heat the shit out of this with a torch probably come up with some sort of a special tool or modify a special tool a tool rather to grab these and I'd get them out eventually, but there's no need to do that right now. So again, it was only a good practice thing, which unfortunately just can't be done right now. So if I ever have to do that, I will do it at that time. But we don't need to do it, so we're not going to invite uh, an issue or a catastrophe. So those are the three things I wanted to show you. I got good float bounce here, and uh, that's what you really need to see in, in a accurate float Level check, I've showed this many times before. I use a stare at 120 dial caliper to do that. And so now we're ready to put the float bowls back on, which I will do. 
So the next clip you should see is me actually putting the carbs back into the machine. That'll end this video because, well actually I guess we'll uh, run it too, but um, I wanted to show you that part because I know that's a really commonly asked question about getting these V4 carbs back in. Okay folks, I'm in the top of the carbs now, the vacuum diaphragm, the slide side. We'll just call it the uh, the vacuum diaphragm at this point because um, um, it's, it, it's attached to the slide so close enough. And so uh, I have all these out and my initial intention was just to take these out to put new screws and I got some screws over here that I'm going to put in on these caps and clean the caps up and stuff. But when I pulled, oh, this is number one and that's number three. When I pull one and three off, I found something that made me go into this a lot deeper. Um, I don't, I'm going to try not to overcomplicate this. Like, when do I ever do that? And I want to explain my findings because this is something as far as drilling down and figuring out, you know, the WTF of something is exactly um, what I'm trying to convey here is a skill that you need to uh, learn and practice when you deal with these old bikes. So let me show you what I found. Okay, first is the problem, the issue. Um, actually, this goes this way right now for demonstration purposes. This is number three vacuum diaphragm. Uh, you can see that there is a hole in it. Number one is the same. Number one's got a hole in it. You can see it pretty well right there. Number uh, two and four are okay. Now I'm going to lay these out this way because... Um, this is uh, for a little bit later. I'm going to explain this as far as the springs go. Number, as I think I mentioned, two and four are okay. But these are aftermarket um, vacuum diaphragms for the slides. Um, I think I got them from JDI or JD Industry, JB Industries. And I have nothing bad to say about them at all. They're very good quality and they've held up pretty well. But, you know, they wear out like anything else and they're pretty thin compared to the original ones. But they definitely worked, definitely, for, you know, what I paid for them at that time. But here is absolutely um, the cause of our um, performance issues uh, under throttle. All right, when you got a hole in your diaphragm like that, you know, uh, you're definitely, definitely not going to have um, a lot of um, proper action as far as the slide movement, and the slide's not going to be moving either as fast or certainly up high enough under this under similar vacuum uh, conditions of the other carbs, and then. Um, uh, you know, it, it's it's a shit show from there. So I do have those other carbs, as I mentioned, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at those uh, vacuum diaphragm slides right now. All right, so here's the four out of the other carbs, which um, we'll get into as far as identifying those carbs, but I was pretty sure those are from an 8283 Saber, and they are, and I'll tell you in a minute how I know that for sure. For sure, these um, diaphragms and the uh, slides are really in nice condition. There's a little bit of crud on them I can wipe off, but other than that, I mean, they are in almost mint condition. So we'll be definitely using these uh, diaphragms and slides and perhaps fiddling with the needles a little bit, which again, I'll explain here in a minute. It has to do with what I was saying before about figuring stuff out. So the first thing I looked at when I took these out was the fact that there are different length springs, and I'm sure you see that already. Now that doesn't really surprise me because on the Sabre over here, the Sabre carbs are supposed to be that way. And it's right in the service manual. Service manual says that the carbs on number one and three are shorter springs than two and four and that the needles on number one and three are longer and thinner, which I'm not 100% sure of these yet. I haven't verified that. But definitely the springs are supposed to be that way. But, as you could see, when we come over here to the Magna, and this is how I took it out, by the way. All right, They, they are in um, order of how I disassembled them. You can see that we do have different length springs in here, too. And I was very curious about that because the service manual is very specific. And it's right there. The number one and number three carburetors use different jet needles, thinner and shorter, thinner, and shorter springs than that of number two and four carburetors, saber only. Do not interchange these parts. That's right in there. So I said to myself, I said, self, I wonder if we've got saber carbs on this bike for some reason. And luckily Honda does this pretty well. They give you identification numbers, uh, which are right here um, for the carburetors. So for a V45 Saber, this is 82, 83 years. It's a VD50A and VD51A for the Magna. 
So then what I said was, I said, I need to go look at my carbs and make sure that they are 51 A's. And as you can see, uh, my carbs are the 51 A's. So these are definitely Magna carbs. All right, so let's go look at the other ones. They should be 50 A's. And sure as heck, they are definitely 50 A's. So I would expect to see what I'm seeing here in regards to the different spring lengths um, in, these, in this rack, in this set of carbs, because they're 50 A's, so they're most definitely from a Sabre. What I don't expect is to see them in a Magna. And I'm trying to figure out why. So the next thing I do is I go, well, let's see what the parts fish says. And these parts fishes can be very, very helpful in this area because uh, my suspicion initially was that the springs are incorrect for these carbs. So right, let me zoom out a little bit. So this would be number uh, one carb. This would be number three. This would be number two. And this would be number four because this is the forward position. So again, one, three, two, four. So your back carbs one and three. So there's number item, you know, not item, but line number 10 uh, for that rear spring. You over here, you expect to see a 10 if it was all the same, but it's a nine. And you go, uh-oh. So then you look up here and number nine is one part number 16050, uh, vac a spring vacuum piston. And then 16051 for the uh, other vacuum piston. So that tells me that these are different. They're supposed to be different. Now I don't know why they are different because the service manual says they're not supposed to be different in a magna. But either way, uh, that's what it appears to be um, the uh, design for the carbs to have the different length springs. So we'll go back to the springs here real quick. This is again how I took them out. So you see the springs assigned with the um, well, vacuum piston, for lack of a better descriptor, like Honda calls it, uh, as I took them out. Now, <laughs> the way it should be is this. It should be, if it's correct, the shorties on one and three and the longies on two and four. But again, I had them reversed. So when I put these together years ago, I did it wrong and probably just didn't know any better. And so uh, you know that that's incorrect. So in summary, this is how I figured out that yes, these are the correct springs. Um, we're definitely going to replace the uh, vacuum pistons, whatever you want to call them, with the ones from the Sabers over there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to identify that all four of these needles are the same. If they are, we'll take these needles out. We'll put them in those slides. We'll save those needles in my bin, my little parts drawer for that. Uh, label them Honda. And then uh, we can reassemble this thing back into there with the springs this way. As I said before, we're going to do it with the springs this way. I can't explain why there is a difference um, in what uh, the service manual says for the Magna and what I'm finding in the Magna. I, I, don't, I don't know why. All right? I have no idea. I do have a theory, though. And my theory is that this was a re an engineering or a re-engineering change that probably came down as a technical service bulletin to the dealer level. And the reason why is there's a lot of information you can find, especially on Mike Nixon's page. Um, he worked for American Honda back in the 80s. And uh, although he said he wasn't specifically involved in, the, the uh, very heavily involved, at least in the service area, um, he did know a lot about the uh, Magna slash Sabre V45 and the, you know, the V4 issues and the early ones, the alleged issues, you got to read his material and he'll explain what he means by that or what I mean by that. Um, you know, and, and one of the things was carburation. There was a lot of complaints, supposedly, of customers uh, with brand new bikes that didn't run worth a crap and it was deemed to be a carburation issue. So I'm thinking, this is my theory, I'm thinking that back in the day, Honda put a TSB out and said, if somebody comes in with this, this, and this, as far as their conditions go on their carbs, you know, the way it's running, do this, which is put the Sabre springs, and maybe, I have to see, maybe even those needles are supposed to be the Sabre needles, and the, and the one and three carbs, and then leave the uh, two and four alone with the longer springs, because remember, that service manual says Sabre only for that, but we find it in a Magna. That is the most plausible the most plausible um, reason, all right, most plausible. So yeah, that's pretty cool, um, figuring all that stuff out. I, I love doing this part of it. Uh, you find something, 
and you go, WTF? Why? And then you go in there and do a deep dive and figure it out. I'll show you a little trick about these um, vacuum diaphragms here. These, Especially the old ones you're reusing or sourcing some used ones. But here's the problem. And the problem is these always shrink and they don't want to go in the groove. So you're like, how am I going to get these in? Well, you can't put this in and just have it clamped down and make sure you line up your little tab on your cover too because that's a little clearance for that because that's where the little vacuum impulse comes through or vacuum differential. You can't just clamp it down like this because you will completely waste this thing. Now, it sort of wants to go in. So we obviously have to put the spring in, but what I do with these, it works really well. I already did one. That way I could show you and not look like a complete idiot is you just take a little bit of this uh, super lube like silicone grease and I mean just a tiny bit and just rub it around this uh, this is strangely satisfying the edge of this uh, you know ridge for the inside of the groove don't plug up the little vacuum doodad right and then what you want to do is just you know just a little bit just to make it slickery you know like you're trying to push it in and it just won't quite go you guys know how that is right then you line your doodad up, put your spring in. This is on the other side of the carb, so it's a longer one. If I'm reading this right, which I may not be. And then we line her up where she needs to go. And then just kind of work it. Yep, there it goes. And you'll feel it. It'll pop in, and it won't rock anymore. And whatever you do, don't let it go. But you will feel it that it slips in the groove. If it is out of that groove, that's that uh, machine spot that that lip goes into, this thing will not sit flush. It will not be sitting down flush. So you use that as your kind of go, no go on this. And then get your screws started to get a couple in. Yeah, so just keep holding it. Get a couple of screws in. Make sure it don't move or you just have to redo it. But you want to look at it from the side if possible to make sure there's no you know space larger on one side than the other then you know the thing is down but again you absolutely do not want to clamp this down I've seen them many times that way on stuff I've worked on over the years that's come in here that um, you take it out and that edge is all butchered up because it's been sitting on the um, lip instead of the, the it's been sitting on the tip instead of the lip <laughs> so it's been right on the edge and so uh, it can't uh, you know can't seat right now it might be working but it ain't gonna work for long because that's gonna tear that up all right so we'll double check that and we're nice and flush so we know that's good so that's one way you can kind of get around that uh, when you have them where they just don't want to quite line up and uh, this one is not clocked properly there, there if you're wondering at all what this what this is here um, there's remnants of the other um, diaphragm in here the, the aftermarket diaphragms don't come with these little tabs, so you essentially, when you clock these diaphragms on the um, uh, on the slides, all right, they, they tell you how to do that. Um, you clock it so um, you know where that hole is. You make a mark on it, like with a marker up in here, and then you just cut this off of the original one and then stick it in here like a little Honda bond. I think that's, that's what I used, and then just line this thing up. So essentially, when the aftermarket's in, it looks like that, and it works just fine. So, of course, we have the proper diaphragm and tabs here, so I'll go ahead and pull all that out and clean it out, and we'll get this one in. And But I want to show you that. I want to show you there is a way around that to uh, do it uh, properly and safely to get, you know, to get these into the groove all the way so they sit flush. I want to show you one more thing when you have these uh, diaphragms that are not, you know, necessarily playing nice with you when you try to line them up to that, to that groove around there. Uh, once you think you get it in, uh, see, I have to reach down and do this because the way these are set up. You want to go ahead and flick the uh, diaphragm, uh, slide up and down. It's kind of dampened. Let's try the other one here. And they're pretty much the same. This one wasn't before. I had to do it two more times to get it right. When they're not incorrectly, what's going to happen is you're going to, it's going to go up real quick, like only going against the spring pressure. Uh, essentially when it's in correctly, when it's in properly rather, um, it has to displace the air above that diaphragm which is sealed around the edge there. So this is the proper feel that it's kind of dampened, you know, kind of smushy.
but if it just goes clunk and then back down on with the spring recoiling it or returning it that's not incorrectly so you have to make sure of that so always flick your thingies <laughs> when you get done with them to make sure you got a good seal on that uh, so that's just what I wanted to bring up on that as well I already did this one over here too and uh, it's fine I got one more to do and then we can button these carbs up um, to prepare to get them back in the bike I also wanted to report back to you about the needles these are two of the needles that came out of those uh, 50 A's the uh, saber carbs now they're not necessarily lo ones longer than the other maybe slightly I don't know it I can't really tell the length but you can definitely tell that one is narrower uh, if you look here the shadow is kind of screwing it up but if you look here it comes down and kind of tapers narrow right there it starts to get thin pretty quick this one on the other hand is pretty much just a, a straight taper down it might take a slight uh, more taper right here but not as aggressive as over here whoops so definitely uh, definitely the uh, needles are different whereas the ones that I took out of the uh, Magna slides the ones that have the holes in them the aftermarket ones um, those were all the same and that's what went back in the rack that's going back on the bike but I wanted to show you the needles and I mentioned it before about being different and indeed they are all right guys that's it on the carb detail video as far as what I did in the carbs and what I found um, I'm going to split this up into a third video now which will be um, installing the carbs, doing a couple other things. I'm going to show you something on the uh, valve clearance check on it as well. And then we'll get it running and then show you how it runs. So the last one should be pretty short compared to these. But I don't want to go any longer than this one is already. Probably too long. Probably asleep already. But if you're not, I um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. There's a lot to these V4 carbs in particular. And there's a lot when you start finding stuff. <laughs> like the holes in the diaphragms and the whole kit and caboodle. All right, when you find stuff, you got to deal with it. And there was a couple extra things that I wanted to show you regarding that. So if you like what you saw, you know what to do. Subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, share. You're smart. You watch YouTube. Till then, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.